what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today we're going to be testing out the all new RTX 4060 and the unit that I have here just happens to be from Zotac this is their twin edge overclock edition and I'll tell you the truth I've been looking forward to the RTX 4060 the 60 series cards are some of my favorites my main gaming rig right now has a Zotac RTX 3060 non TI variant and I usually sleep on the TI versions because I do like these 60 series obviously the TI will offer better performance but uh yeah when it comes down to it this is going to be upgrading my main gaming rig from that 3060 and i hope it's a nice jump in performance another reason i really like these 60 series cards is they pair very well as an external gpu whether you want to use thunderbolt 3 thunderbolt 4 or even something like an oculink port if you're a regular viewer of the channel you know i always recommend the rtx 3060 when it comes to you know external gpus on our handhelds and mini pcs and things like that so in the future, we will do another video with the RTX 4060 connected over Thunderbolt 4, and we'll also test out Oculink. Overall, really like the design. They haven't strayed much from their older 3060 series cards, but you know, given that we have this white variant, I think it looks really good, and it'll go with some nice builds. So this is not a 4K card whatsoever. Price on this is $329 for the Zotac Twin Edge model, but the RTX 4060 retail, you know, supposed retail price is $299. And that's coming in a bit lower than the older 3060 cards when they were initially released. But if you wanted to go with something like a 3060 Ti, you could pick one up used on eBay for cheaper than you can buy one of these new RTX 4060s for. So in the end, it's really up to you. But since we've got this brand new 4000 series card, I figured we'd go ahead and take a look at it. And unfortunately, this is not an ITX card. It's coming in at 225.5 millimeters or 8.9 inches long. But, you know, we've still got a smaller card when compared to other uh, 4000 series cards on the market, as we know. It utilizes a single 8-pin PCIe connector. None of that uh, new kind of proprietary connector here. So if you've got an older power supply, it should work just fine. And they do recommend a 500-watt power supply, given that the TDP on this is rated at 115 watts. I've been testing it out. At idle, we're around 9 watts. And yeah, we can pull 115 with this card at full boat. When it comes to the specs here of that 4060, we've got 372 CUDA cores, 8 gigabytes of GDDR6, it's running at a 128-bit bus, boost clock of 2,490 megahertz, it utilizes PCIe 4.0 X8 instead of X16, we've got three DisplayPort 1.4As and one HDMI 2.1A port, so of course it will support quad displays, recommended 500 watt power supply, Power consumption is rated at 115 watts, and it's a two-slot card. I think it looks really good, and if you're going with kind of a Snow White build, I would definitely pick something like this. I think uh, it kind of sets it off. Now, the rig that I've got this in is definitely overkill, but I didn't want to limit the card itself. I wanted to see what kind of performance this thing can put out when it's paired up with some of the best hardware on the market right now. So I've actually put this in one of my work rigs. We've got an Intel i9-13900K clocked at 5.5 gigahertz, an Intermax Liquid Max 3 360 AIO cooler, a gigabyte Z790 Aero motherboard, 64 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 6800 megahertz, a two terabyte 4.0 SSD, a Corsair RMX 850 watt power supply, and of course we've got that Zotac Twin Edge RTX 4060, and it's all slammed inside of an Antec Dark League DF700. Really love this case. If this card performs like I'm hoping it will, I will do a full build. Obviously we're going to go much smaller and see how tight we can pack this card in there. But uh, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into some gaming because that's what this thing's all about. I want to see how this thing performs. And first on the list, one of my favorite games, you know it was coming if you watched the channel, we've got Forza Horizon 5, 1440p extreme settings. Like I mentioned, this is not a 4K card, but with a lot of this stuff I've had really good luck at 1440p. We're not using any kind of resolution scale or anything like that, so no DLSS, no frame generation, and we're getting an average of 87 FPS at 1440p extreme with this game. Next thing I wanted to take a look at were a few benchmarks, and we've got some OpenCL performance here with Geekbench 6, 107,583. Also wanted to run a 3D Ray Tracing feature test. As we know, with these lower-end tiered cards, we're not going to get high-end ray tracing, but with some stuff it might work out pretty well. But we only scored 27.54 FPS here with this test. Total score here on this rig with Fire Strike was 28,063, but our graphic score was 29,292. And finally, Time Spy, total score with the rig I have, 11,698, 
Graphic score, 10,816. So in these synthetic benchmarks, what I'm seeing right now is, yeah, it's definitely beating out the RTX 3060, but it's coming a bit behind the RTX 3060 Ti, which is definitely not something we wanted to see with kind of a next-gen card. It's definitely not by much, but you know, I was expecting it to beat it out. But these are synthetics, and now it's time to jump into some more real-world gaming. So this one was actually really impressive. Jedi Survivor, 1440p, epic settings, no DLSS, we got an average of 111 FPS with this game. And you know, I went through for a little while playing it out, more opened up areas, and it was really great. Never drops under 60. And of course, with DLSS enabled, a lot of these games will run at 4K, but you know, we're kind of using that magical DLSS. I wanted to alleviate that in all of my testing. Moving over to Street Fighter VI, 1440p, Ultra, got a steady 60 FPS here, and I was really hoping that we could do 4K at Ultra, but unfortunately we did have some dips under 60, and with a fighting game, especially when you're online, you want that constant frame rate. But I did go and I tested out Injustice 2 and Mortal Kombat 11, a little older, but at 4K very high, it'll run those all day at 60. Checking out God of War, 1440p, Ultra, and at Ultra, this is one that I had to enable DLSS with. We went to quality because without it, it was dipping under 60, which was a bit unfortunate. Now, obviously at 1080p, you're going to be good to go maxed out here, but I really wanted to test that 1440p with the RTX 4060. And unfortunately, if you wanted to max this out, you will need some DLSS enabled. There is Horizon Zero Dawn, said it before, this game we runs great on a lot of different systems. This Even lower end APUs can run this very crisis. well over 60 mm -hmm. FPS, and I didn't think that we'd the have an issue with it. And as you can see, we don't. 1440p Ultra, no DLSS, no other resolution scale going on here. We got an average of 78 FPS with it. Further down river, we'll find a herd of machines. Spider-Man Miles Morales will also apply to Spider-Man Remastered. 1440p, very high, no DLSS, 86 FPS on average. I test this game out quite a bit on a lot of different systems, and I've always found it kind of favors NVIDIA. Even on my 3060 non-TI variant, I've had great luck at 1440p, very high settings, so I kind of expected that we'd be able to run this at full speed here. Looking great, and it plays just fine on this card. The next one here I always get asked about, so I figured I'd throw it in. We've got Microsoft Flight Simulator, and with this, we're at 1080p, very high. I was hoping for 1440p, very high with this, no DLSS, but it's a little out of the question, because even at 1080p here, we're only getting an average of 79 FPS. It's playable like this with no DLSS, but if you wanted to up that resolution, that's something you'd have to use. And of course, we had to test out Cyberpunk 2077, 1440p, high. So at 1440p, very high or ultra settings, it will dip under 60 in certain areas, especially with the population density jacked all the way up. But again, with all of these games, we've also got DLSS that we could use to get better frame rates out of it. I know some people out there are against that resolution scale, be it DLSS or FSR, but personally, I do like using it to an extent, and when you need it, it definitely helps out. Okay, so really, the RTX 4060 is a solid performer, but is it worth $299, or in this case, $329, given that we have the Zotac Twin Edge version? Well, that's really going to be left up to you. Some people might want this 4000 series over a 3000 series, but keep in mind you can pick up the RTX 3060 Ti for about $320 new from a few different stores, just do a quick Google search. And in synthetic benchmarks, it does benchmark out a bit higher than the 4060 non-TI variant that we've taken a look at in this video. But since I'm going to be using this to upgrade an RTX 3060, I do find value in it, and it definitely performs much better than that 3060. Now, of course, in a perfect world, this would be a $250 card. And if this was a $250 card, I'd go ahead and tell you to run out and buy it right now. But you kind of need to weigh your options here. If you're already using an RTX 3060 Ti, no reason to upgrade. You will get a bit better performance if you're using an RTX 3060. So everybody's use case scenario will be a bit different.
But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. I've got a couple more coming with this card. I do want to do a much smaller build, and we're also going to be testing this as an external GPU using Thunderbolt and even an Oculink port. If you're interested in learning a little more, I'll leave some links to Zotac's website. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.